Doc Rivers, might I say, coach, okay, <laughs> I see. Uh, coach, how optimistic are you that the NBA will resume sometime in July? Uh, very. Uh, I mean, listen, we know basically what you know. We I, Obviously, I know a little bit more, but uh, we hear the same rumors. We hear the same stuff. Uh, we hear the one location uh, in Florida and two locations, maybe Vegas. I think everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to be healthy as well, though. What, what is your take on potentially playing all of your games in one centralized location? You know, I don't care where we play. I, and I'm being very honest. I would love to play at home. Uh, in front of our fans. But right now, I don't think any of us can do that. And so the second option is being safe and playing. And I think everyone wants to play. I know we do. Listen, we have a shot at it. Uh, so do several other teams. And any team that does want to get the season going back. You know, you think about it. Uh, we've played 65-plus games. Uh, if, if we do go straight to the playoffs, which we don't know if we'll do or not, I think everybody would be willing to do that. You're right. You certainly are one of those teams that is playing for something. So what has communication been like for you during this pandemic with Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and your other players? It's been very good. You know, um, I have a big coaching staff, uh, myself. We talk to our players daily. Uh, they, they're they working out. They've been great uh, overall with their workouts. Uh, they work on Zoom like everyone else is working on Zoom uh, with our strength and conditioning. So everyone's doing great. You know, there are some guys that haven't had a chance to get in the gym, you know, so conditioning will be great. Uh, basketball conditioning may be an issue, and I think the, the NBA would give us all enough time uh, to try to get as sharp as we can before we start playing. What would enough time look like for you to get everybody back into what could be playoff shape? You know, that's a tough one uh, because we are all were in pretty good shape before this ended, but now this has almost been like a summer break, and so now – we're going to get back in and get right back into it. Uh, 30 days, maybe it would take uh, maybe more. I don't know the answer to that uh, because this is something I've never been involved in. If you needed 30 days to ramp up and get your season ready, and then, of course, you would need the playoffs as well. Do you anticipate that there would then have to be some type of delay or postpone it for the next season? Yeah, most likely. Uh, but we have room. We have wiggle room there. You know, I've heard the date, the Christmas date floated around uh, that is very feasible for the nba i think we can do that uh i think adam silver the players uh the players association everyone wants to crown a champion this year and then after that uh we'll figure out how to start the following year and give the proper rest Coach, we just learned today of the passing of Hall of Fame head coach Jerry Sloan, and you coached against him in the nba for over a decade do you have a memorable story that you can share with us about him not really, just his toughness. I always thought as a coach, especially a young coach, you know, you measured yourself uh, through Jerry Sloan. And, you know, if the NBA had a, a, a picture next to the word toughness in the NBA, it would be Jerry Sloan. Thank God I didn't have to play against him when you hear those stories about how tough he was. But he was that way as a coach as well. And I just remember as a coach, you're always peeking down at him on the other sideline because he was always in control he was in control of his players. And at times you felt like he was in control of the officials because no one wanted to mess with him. Uh, he was a great one, a titan uh, in our league. I know he'd been struggling the last couple of years with his health uh, and just extremely sad news. You know, he doesn't get the credit that, in my opinion, he deserves. He's one of the greatest coaches to ever coach in the NBA. He was close a couple of times. We've seen it as recently as Sunday. Of course, he lost him in the Jazz, lost back-to-back -back NBA Finals to Michael Jordan and the Bulls in 97 and 98. I want you to weigh in on something that has been a huge topic of conversation. You played against Michael Jordan, and you coached against LeBron James. So what do you make yeah. of the comparisons between who's better, MJ and LeBron? I just think it's the way we are. You know, we have to have a comparison. Um, you know, I played against Michael, and, and I just have always put Michael as number one. But that shouldn't take anything away from LeBron or Magic or Kareem, who I think gets overlooked way too much uh, as well. Uh, Kobe as well. I mean, but Michael, to me, is the greatest player he's a GOAT, right? And it's okay that everyone measures themselves against him. You look at boxing, Muhammad Ali, in my opinion, is the GOAT. Uh, but there's been a lot of great fighters after that that you can make an argument for. And you can obviously make an argument for LeBron. Uh, me, I'm always taking MJ until I see something better. 
It's always fun to debate things that can never actually be decided. Uh, and lastly, no, right, be. ever. Uh, and lastly, Coach, today's the 32-year anniversary of Game 7 of the Eastern Conference semis between the Hawks and Celtics when Larry Bird yeah. and Dominique Wilkins had that epic duel in the fourth quarter. You were on that Hawks team. What stands out to you when you look back at that night? Other than losing that game <laughs> and, and uh, they're, they're calling it a phantom goaltend on me, which you will see at the very end. Uh, it's one of the rare games that you're involved in a game and you're actually aware of what's going on as far as what the greatness of Bird and the greatness of Dominique. You know, it, it's funny. I had seen Dominique do it so many times, so that part didn't surprise me. Larry Bird just frustrated me. I had seen a 60-point game that he had on me years ago uh, or, or on us years ago in New Orleans, but his clutch shots in the fourth quarter were just amazing. Uh, left and right, yeah, he was amazing. Well, the good news is you didn't win that game, but 20 years later in a very similar duel between Paul Pierce, right, and your Celtics and LeBron James, you came out on top yeah. and, of course, went on to win the Larry O'Brien. So it all worked out in the end. Doc it all Rivers. works out it at all, the yeah, end. If you, if you hang in there long enough, hell, that's, that's for sure. 20 years in the making. Doc Rivers, good luck. Thanks so much for joining us here on SportsCenter and be well. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.